Hello, my dear. Today is 26th of April and it means that the war escalation in Ukraine has started 62 days ago. 62 days ago, everybody thought that Ukraine will survive only for three or five days and uh, that uh, it will be an easy thing for invaders to occupy the territory of the whole country and to install here its uh, marionette governance. Now here it is uh, the day 62, Ukraine is alive and uh, Ukraine is heroically fighting against the uh, invasion. I read uh, a lot of messages, um, a lot of comments uh, on the different videos on different platforms uh, made by Russians, uh, and uh, there was one comment saying, can you name at least one hero of Ukraine? Uh, to somebody else, it wasn't me who was commenting before. And uh, I want to tell you that I see heroes uh, every day around me and uh, I can literally name, show, and uh, I'm very proud to be uh, the part of this community, the part of these people, all volunteers, uh, all people, all our boys who now are on the front line, all our boys who are now in the territorial defense, uh, all our girls who are now on the front line, all our girls who are now on the, in the territorial defense, Ukraine now is uh, one of the most equal armies in the world. We are on the second place uh, after Israeli army with the uh, 20% of women in the uh, military forces. So uh, Ukrainian women are fighting to on the front line. But Ukrainian women are also finding here, they are making these uh, coverage nets, uh, masking nets, uh, they uh, cook a lot, they help refugees, uh, they uh, see a lot of things uh, and uh, they act as volunteers as well. And uh, I can name you a lot of heroes and uh, the only thing I'm not doing it right here and right now is the same uh, because uh, this, for the same reason I'm not naming all people who are helping us. I'm simply afraid that I will forget somebody because there are so many people who want to help and who are helping and there are so many people who fight, who fight heroically, who fight uh, each uh, on uh, his or her own front line, that uh, when I talk about it, uh, I'm uh, in panic because uh, I think, uh, or I can forget one person or even several people and uh, that will be not fair to them. And uh, I'm literally, I'm so grateful to everybody. I'm so grateful for support, for help, uh, and uh, I'm grateful and uh, I'm thankful to the destiny that uh, I'm here now, I'm not abroad and I'm not stuck in some foreign country and uh, I can also contribute uh, into liberation of my nation against uh, Russianism. And uh, this Russianism is the ideology which is supported uh, by uh, different data by 85 to 90% of uh, the population of Russia. And uh, today it's not only the day 62, uh, of the war. Uh, also today is uh, Tuesday after Easter and, uh, and this year Easter celebrations uh, they were not uh, that uh, light as they usually are. As a rule Easter is my favorite holiday but uh, this year right uh, on the Easter Eve uh, a Russian rocket uh, have hit uh, residential buildings in Odessa and uh, in one of the flats uh, they killed uh, the whole family, they killed uh, grandmother, they killed mother and they killed a three months old baby uh, whose father went uh, for the groceries uh, and uh, literally after 10 minutes uh, he came uh, to non-existent place and uh, learned that uh, all his family dead. And uh, that uh, obviously the Saturday was a very morning day for all Ukrainians because uh, it's unspeakable, it's highly precise rocket and uh, Russia sent it uh, exactly knowing where it flies. And uh, right uh, on the east, uh, right on Sunday, uh, another rocket uh, killed uh, two children, uh, also girls uh, aged 5 and 14 in one of the villages in Lugansk region. So both Saturday and Sunday uh, here they were 
uh, quite sad days. Um, um, and we asked the Russians uh, for ceasefire, but they uh, for, for one day for Easter, but uh, they rejected. Uh, and uh, they claim that they're religious and their nation is very orthodox and Christian, uh, which turned out uh, not to be true uh, even uh, when we talk about Easter celebrations. But despite that, uh, we tried to make uh, these days as bright and as light as possible to our refugees' families and uh, for children. We organized uh, the workshops. Uh, uh, this is a part of weekly workshops uh, organized by volunteers from uh, the crafts, uh, craftswomen actually, uh, in the neighborhood. Uh, and uh, this week, uh, these uh, workshops, uh, they were dedicated to Easter. So uh, there were three groups of children. One group was painting Easter eggs, the other group was drawing Easter drawings, uh, and uh, the smallest group, uh, they were cutting the bunnies from paper. That was a lot of fun, and uh, seeing the joy for children, um, it should uh, fill uh, me with the joy with myself, but knowing why they are in this place exactly and why we are doing it, it uh, actually it brings the opposite to my mind, and uh, whenever they are taking pictures, I wanted to cry all the time. That was my feelings, uh, and uh, it's uh, not literally what uh, you expect uh, from the person who is uh, actually <laughs> seeing the smiling children. And then um, also this week, uh, uh, talking about uh, Easter, uh, we personally went to church uh, and uh, we did uh, the normal, normal kind of Easter routine, as normal as it's possible. And uh, we tried to live uh, also as normal as we can. And one of my friends, uh, he was surprised when I took a picture from the shop when I was buying groceries uh, for the children. There is a family with 11 children who were evacuated uh, from uh, this hot region and they are now in the suburb uh, of uh, Dnipro. And uh, this uh, uh, family, they needed food, they, they still need food. We will go there this week as well. And they, they were in need of clothing and, and we collected the things. And uh, I took pictures uh, of myself staying there in the supermarket with the whole trolley of uh, things. Uh, and my friend from abroad, he was very surprised uh, that uh, we have everything in the supermarkets. And he was like, how it happened that uh, in war zone, uh, being uh, this region, which is literally on the border with the war zone, you can buy things in supermarkets? Uh, yes, we can. Uh, here in Dnipro, we are very lucky. We don't have any food shortage. But when we went to the church uh, on our way, uh, two women asked uh, us for help because they saw that I have a basket and they uh, asked where the church is. Uh, so we went together and they were saying that they are from Slavyansk. And uh, they said that before the war started, the war escalation this uh, February one started, uh, they had everything in the supermarkets. But uh, by the time they had to evacuate, which happened on the 8th of April, the shops were almost empty and only necessary basics uh, were there. That's how bad the situation is uh, in this borderline. And uh, the situation in occupied uh, cities uh, also is very severe because occupants, uh, they know that they are here temporary, it's not their land. And uh, they try not to bring things to people in the stores. Uh, and they are introducing rubles uh, in, their, in, in their stores. Uh, they are kind of... Uh, um, making in Mariupol, there are messages that they were making people to dig graves, uh, mass graves, uh, uh, to hide the bodies uh, of people whom they killed uh, in exchange uh, of food. And uh, that's uh, something that they are saying they are providing humanitarian help. That's not a humanitarian help, that's basically enslaving people. And uh, in occupied regions, the food situation is very severe. Also, there is a food uh, problem which is upcoming because spring is uh, the time when you need to plant something in order to harvest something in autumn and um, uh, estimated that 20% uh, of uh, Ukrainian crops uh, wouldn't be planted so it means that uh, not only Ukraine but also troubled uh, places uh, where normally not normally but where usually we have these food shortages they will be in lack uh, of food as well because Ukraine was one of the biggest exporters of grain in the world. And now we have this problem as well. 
And uh, also today is uh, the 26th of April, which means that the very same day in uh, 1986 there was the nuclear explosion on Chernobyl uh, nuclear power station, which led uh, to numerous victims and the consequences uh, of this explosion we can feel still today in Ukraine because uh, the number of people suffering from cancer grew up uh, a lot, especially a uh, number of people who has uh, different diseases uh, or cancer of the thyroid gland, which is a small thing. Uh, <laughs> right here and uh, i was very surprised uh, to learn that uh, many people are actually take thyroid medications here that um, thyroid medications uh, as well as insulin uh, during the first weeks of war they were in the huge deficit uh, and uh, they are needed to maintain the normal living for people including many of my friends and i, did, I even didn't know that they take it until uh, there was a shortage of it so now it's uh, possible to buy but uh, with a lot of difficulties in the city so we have still the deficit of special things or certain medications here and uh, again there are places in Ukraine where they have uh, food shortage especially in this uh, front line or bordering front line regions where uh, bringing food uh, is uh, connected with a lot of troubles because uh, of today because uh, of uh, commemoration day here of uh, Chernobyl uh, nuclear disaster I wanted to find uh, a poem connected to Chernobyl and I was very surprised to find uh, a poem that actually is connected to present-day situation with refugees and uh, I wanted to share these lines with you and probably you'll be surprised uh, how similar are uh, actually experience uh, of uh, the people uh, who lived uh, back then and uh, who uh, had to leave their houses forcibly and uh, people who are now suffering in 2022 are suffering uh, Russia's invasion into Ukraine. Let's read it together. Переселенцям Галина Карандан Ти тільки уяви, ось ти живеш, працюєш і любиш свій дім, що сам побудував. Садок плекаєш, внуків вже плануєш, всяких таких хоч статків та надбав. І раптом грім серед ясного неба. Збирайся швидко і забирайся геть. Це тимчасово. Ні, речей не треба. Без паніки. Це ще не зовсім смерть. І ти пішов, не зачинивши двері, бо у печі ще не допікся хліб. Скрипить на вітрі хвіртка, як химера. І десь сховався з переляку кіт. Забилася у розпачі дружина, Дочка вагітна посивіла враз. У лоні ще отруяна дитина, А в Києві парад із, із пишних фраз. Сюди ти не повернешся ніколи, Роз'їхалися друзі хто куди. Хворіє внучка, а старі ікони І скрипуча хвіртка знов приходять в сни. Немає чорнобілих фотографій. Потрюхли спогади, сьогоднішнім живи. Убито клин посеред біографій. Ти тільки уяви. Ти просто уяви. I don't know if you have noticed the phrase uh, in Kiev there is a parade of uh, the pompous phrases. And uh, actually Bolsheviks back then they were obsessed uh, with uh, the idea of May Day, of May Parade. Uh, and uh, despite the catastrophe they didn't tell the population that they have to stay at home. And... Uh, in Kyiv on the 1st of May, on May Day, there was a parade and uh, many people went outside at the moment where, uh, when they had to stay indoors uh, with closed windows or leave the city would be the best way. So lying and uh, being dedicated to these symbols, to these celebrations is something that Russians took from Bolsheviks and uh, this year also they hope uh, to celebrate the May Day and uh, the May Victory Day which is on the 9th of May and even foreign experts are saying that they hope uh, and they uh, desperately want to present the victory over 
Ukrainian territory and uh, they want to use uh, Ukrainian war prisoners who are now in the prisons, uh, nobody knows where, probably somewhere on the territory of Russia. They want to use them uh, on this parade and uh, to force them to go uh, in this uh, Moscow to, to this Red Square, which is uh, a crime itself. And uh, also there are numerous uh, warning signs that um, Ukrainian soldiers are treated uh, in their prisons uh, not uh, as they should be treated and uh, that uh, Russia wants them to give uh, forcibly give blood. And uh, that is something that uh, was uh, done by Nazi regime 80 years ago and that's something that's uh, repeated as a war crime uh, by modern Russians um, and uh, nothing has changed. Nothing has changed since the uh, Second World War. Nothing has changed since uh, Chernobyl nuclear disaster. Uh, people in Kremlin only can lie to their people, can lie to the international community. They can commit crimes uh, and they can call black things white. That's uh, what's going on and uh, uh, that was uh, my week. Uh, I hope that the next week will be better and uh, we all are waiting for good news from the front line. We are waiting forward uh, to the liberation of Ukraine because uh, this kind of disaster, this uh, Russia's uh, disease uh, imposed uh, on Ukraine uh, is spreading and uh, if it wouldn't be stopped here, it will spread further. Thank you again so much for your support. Thank you for staying with me and all of us. And that's uh, something that uh, makes uh, the life much easier and uh, that uh, helps uh, us uh, uh, to stand and uh, to fight uh, in our front lines. Thank you very much and uh, I hope to meet you next week. Goodbye for now.